Sunday, December 27th. And we're going to talk about Sefer Tehillim, the books of Psalms, the book of Psalms. And in Hebrew, it's called Sefer Tehillim, praises of God. This is our textbook. This is our coffee table. This is our favorite book of the entire Bible. This is the most popular book, not this one, but the book of Psalms is the most popular book in all of the Bible. So Bible being the most popular book of all time, here you have the most popular book within the Old Testament, the Torah. And tonight we're going to be looking at chapter 67. Perek Samach Zion. 67 out of 150 chapters. So let's get started. If you have a copy of From Your Lips to God's Ears, you should turn to page 253. I just want to share with everybody that in the past couple of weeks, several people called me and said, can I get a box of books to them, 10 books, 20 books, 25 books, and they were giving them out as gifts. It doesn't have to be just Hanukkah or holiday time. This is the most amazing gift that you can give to somebody, especially in this day and age, where people are suffering, they're alone, they're, you know, hammered financially. And Tehillim, as my favorite cousin, <laughs> Michael Kelati, said to me once, is, this is the book, when people fall on their faces, that you pick up the book and it lifts you up. So it's an amazing, amazing opportunity that we have to read the words that were in the temple, song and music and dance even. And here, 3,000 years later, we still hold that book of Tehillim in our hands because we want to connect to God. And there was no better ever than King David. King David has become my spiritual role model. And I monitor his mentality, the mechanism of his mind. He had this pure faith. And people come to me, Reuben, teach me. How do I have emuna? How do I have bitachon? How do I have confidence in my relationship with God? How can I have an understanding that I'm speaking clearly to the Lord, to God. Literally, why the title of the book is From Your Lips to God's Ears. And I, I just think that if you speak clearly to somebody else, they're going to comprehend you. And I think with God, sure, he could understand you if you were mumbling. However, I think it's also a deliberateness and a conscientiousness that people have when they pray, they're feeling positive about the output. By the way, if you're enjoying this, you can share this with friends. You can try to get your family to listen to this. Also, you could sign up that whenever I go on the air, which is going to be daily, that I'll be covering a number of different subjects. And um, tonight I'm doing Tehillim. I'm also known as the Haftorah Man. So we're going to have a good time here. Now, let's look at page 253. And... The chapter that we're reading is chapter Perek Samach Zion, 67. If you want, you could say the entire book of Tehillim on a weekly cycle. And this book 
divides it up very easily to see what the weekly cycle is. Then there's a monthly cycle, if you want to say all of Tehillim over the course of 30 days. And then finally, just like there's five books of Moses, there's five books of Tehillim. And we're in the second book of Tehillim. If you're saying it on a monthly cycle, you're on the 12th day of the cycle. And if you're on a weekly cycle, you're already, when you're saying chapter 67, on a weekly cycle, you're on Tuesday. So 67 out of 150. Um, It's interesting because this is the chapter that was... Uh, oftentimes in the graphic art, ooh, let me get that for you, is done in the shape of a menorah. That this, we will see why it is done in the shape of the menorah, but this is the entire chapter with calligraphy in the shape of a menorah, a candelabra. So I remember this particular psalm because when I was a kid, I grew up at Kew Gardens. And whatever afternoon it was where we would, you know, be playing Ring Alivio and we would be, you know, just, <laughs> I don't think I ever came home without my shirt torn open from people grabbing me to play Ring Alivio. So by the time, you know, Shabbat was over, the Sabbath was over, you'd go up into the shul, you go to the sanctuary, and they would sing this song, actually two, but this was one of the two chapters that they would sing. I grew up in the Adat Yeshurun, the Kew Garden Synagogue. Very, very old-fashioned. Loved it. I mean, I grew up with it. It was great, but it was called Yekis. They were the Yekis. They were the German Jews, and the German Jews were very, very exact and precise and proper. So there I was, as I am self-described, a behavior problem, and I come into the synagogue, and they start singing this song right before Shabbat is over. So you'll get to hear me singing in a minute. Let's start off with who wrote this chapter is the first question. Now, in this case, no one's name is mentioned. However, because David HaMelech, King David, wrote over 70 out of the 150 chapters, you can safely say, you know, if you like, you're throwing a dart at it, that it was King David. And we all know King David was Shlomo HaMelech's father. Shlomo, King Solomon, is the one that built the temple, but his father was the one that established Jerusalem as the capital of the United Kingdom of Israel. He was the second king. The first king was Shaul, Saul, who was dethroned. And now Shaul has a bad, bad (laughs) temper. And he's trying to kill David, who, by the way, King David was Shaul's son-in-law. Oh, boy. Can you imagine? Who would ever believe that there was a father-in-law that didn't like his son-in-law so much so he was trying to kill him? Never heard of that. (laughs) And King David was, of course, married to Shaul's daughter. And his best friend, Yonatan, was Shaul's son. The daughter, by the way, in case you think I forgot to say it, was Michal. And they had a tenuous uh, relationship as well. So we believe, Judaism believes, that the Davidic dynasty will be the patriarch of the Messianic era of the Mashiach, of the Messiah, meaning the anointed one. Now, I am happy to say that this genre of this chapter of Tehillim, following Hermann Gunkel's um, classifications, 
is a psalm of communal thanksgiving. So we'll look out for that while we're reading the chapter. This psalm emphasizes gratitude. Wow, powerful lesson for what God has done for the community as a whole. Now, the chapter summary. This is interesting because the whole chapter is only eight verses long. This chapter speaks of the days of the Mashiach. I'm always troubled by that because from what I was told that in the time of the Tanakh, there was no Mashiach, so to speak. It's post-biblical, this notion of a Messiah, a savior of the Jewish people. You could start throwing darts now, if you know otherwise. The chapter speaks of the days of the Mashiach, when the name of God will be sanctified. We'll see that. And we will then be worthy of great abundance. It is a prayer for both spiritual and material deliverance. The psalm consists of eight verses, subdivided into four parts. The first verse serves as a heading. The last as a concluding verse, in which faith is expressed that one day all nations will fear God. This is a concept that runs throughout Tanakh and Torah, throughout the Old Testament. And it is that there will be not a local God, but there will be a global God and that we will see that not only do Jewish people come to pray in Jerusalem in the temple, but also you can see today even there are Christians there and there are Muslims there. Now the Muslims are not quite <laughs> worshiping the God of the Israelites, but you can see evangelical Christians are Zionists and they love Israel, and they pray on behalf of Israel. And uh, there's part B to that story, but let's just stick to this. Verses 4 and 6 are a refrain in which all nations ta-da, acknowledge God. So let's look at the, ooh, let's look at the first verse. Laminat Seyach, that is to the chief musician, the conductor, the Zubin Meta of the Levitical Orchestra, meaning the orchestra in the temple, King Solomon's temple in Jerusalem, roughly 3,000 years ago. And he would have his two cymbals and he would clang them together, and that would be the key that the Levim would sing in. And it continues, the first verse. Biniginot is a psalm with a musical instrument, the nigun, mizmor shir. A mizmor is using musical instruments, and shir is a song. So I love this part of the book, and it, it sort of... I wouldn't put it in this place again. I would have it more in the front of the book. But anyway, if you look, there's a section of the book in the back of From Your Lips to God's Ears called Obscure Phrases. Now, why do I even have this section? I'll tell you. If you have any of the major Hebrew publishing companies, Tehillim or Psalms, they will transliterate certain words. Like in our case over here, you have binagi note. And it occurs six times in the book of Tehillim. And each and every time, it transliterates it as B, B, and then negi note, N-E-G-I-N-O-T. But that doesn't explain what that word means. So here... According to the Abramoff Research Facility at Ruby University, you have Binigi Note as a nigun. With tunes. Now let's read on. Translation. The songs at times were sung solo as a choir 
with and without musical accompaniment. At times, an individual instrument was played, and at its greatest moment, the Levim played as a full orchestra and sang as a large choir. Can you imagine? Hodu la Hashem, singing with trumpets, horns, harps, lyres. No, I'm telling the truth. And coins. You can see what the musical instrument looked like from the Bar Kokhba coins. You also have drums and you also have cymbals. So here we're going to look at to the chief musician, a psalm with instrumental music and song. That's the first pasuk. And I'll sing it for everybody at the end. Let's just walk through this. Pasuk bet. Elohim yechoneinu v'yivarecheinu. May God favor us, chain, show favor, kindness, v'yivarecheinu, and bless us. Your heir panav, may he cause his countenance to shine. This is God anthropomorphically. Speak in physical terms. Itanu, among us, Sela. So here you have the word Sela. Now, again, it's only going to be transliterated. It's not going to be translated. So here you turn to the back of the book of From Your Lips to God's Ears in the Obscure Phrases section. And you will see the word Sela. It actually is the first of the obscure phrases in the book of Tehillim. It occurs 74 times in the book of Tehillim. So what does it mean? Well, according to some, it means forever. Amen. Forever. We agree. What was just said forever. This word is some form of a musical instruction. The word Sela is found only in the book of Tehillim. Does anybody know it's mentioned one other time somewhere else? In the book of Chavakuk, it is used as a pause between chapters or within a composition. That's B. That's what we have tonight. It can also mean evermore, or so it is, or it is certainly true. There are those who say that Selah means that whatever King David said endures for eternity. So, the way you could look at it is, is the Levium were playing musical instruments, the choir was singing, and this was now a pause in the middle of the song. Itanu Selah Hold it. Let's continue. Pasuk Gimel. La da'at ba'aretz darkecha. So that your way will become known on the earth. Bechol goyim Yeshua secha. And your deliverance among all the nations. Yeshua, you'll be saved from all the nations. Dalit. Yoducha amim Elohim. Here we go. Peoples will thank you, God. So here is the beginning of mentioning of a global God. Yoducha Amim. The nations of the word will know God, the God of the Israelites, of the Jews. Yoducha Amim Kulam. All the peoples will thank you. This is the Thanksgiving prayer. Hey. Yismechu v'yiranenu le'umim. Again, a mention of nations will rejoice and sing. All the peoples will thank you. People. So you can hear that David HaMelech, or whoever wrote this, is thinking not only in a monocular way of a single nation, but that 
the vision is accepted as a, a world of monotheism, of one God. Back then, you had multiple deities, syncretism. You had Asherah, Baal, Molech, and they would have all different ways of worshiping God. And there were fertility gods and war gods and agricultural gods, but the Jewish God was not like that. Judaism was, like I say, the elevators and the escalators. So you say, elevate, escalate, what's that all about? Think about it. An elevator goes up and down, but it got the name to elevate. It's a message to us. We should elevate. Escalator. Escalators go down just as much as they go up. But we should learn. We want to escalate. We want to go up. So here you go to the next sentence. Yismechu v'yerananu le'umim ki sishpot amim mishor. When you judge the peoples justly. Mishor has the shoresh, the root, yashar. Straight. Uleumim ba'aretz tanchem sela. And lead the nations upon the earth. Second pause. So, in between the first Sela and the second Sela, three verses. So that your way become known on earth, that means God's, and your deliverance among all nations. Continue. Peoples will thank you, God. All the peoples will thank you. Nations will rejoice and sing when you judge the peoples justly, the lead, and lead the nations upon the earth, which finishes the verse 5. He describes how God judges and governs all nations. Let's go, Pasuk Vav, only three more to go. Yoducha Amim Elohim, here we go. We had this in the beginning of Pasuk Dalid, now also Pasuk Vav. People will thank you, God. Yoducha Amim Kulam. All the peoples will thank you. Now we go to Pasuk 7, verse 7. Here he gives thanks for an abundant harvest. We lived in an agricultural society. So either you had animals, people did not eat much meat in those days, and the animals would be tilling the soil, helping people farm. So here, Eretz Nasna Yivula. The earth will have yielded its produce. Yevarochenu Elohim Eloheinu. God, our God, will have blessed us. So that was Pasuk Zion. That's you have abundant harvest. And now the last Pasuk. Yevarochenu Elohim. God will bless us. Vir u oto. And they will fear, Yare, Yirat Shemaim. They had fear of God. Kol Afsei Oretz. All men, even from the ends of the earth. There you go, seven chapters, uh, seven verses. Now, I explained, just so you could review, Laminat Seyach is the first word to the conductor. Mizwar was musical accompaniment. Shir was a song. Niginot was nigunim, tunes. Sela was the pause in the music, and we had two of those. And then, according, interesting fact, according to tradition, King David engraved this psalm onto his shield in the shape of a seven-branch menorah and would study its meaning before engaging in a battle. So back to this, that we all know we would say, Magain David, woo, there we go, there we go. And this would be the shield of David. Sorry about this, I'm just backwards in the camera. So Magain David, the shield of David, had this peric, this chapter engraved on it. And you, you can read it if you have uh, the opportunity, chapter 67. 
Finally, not finally, two more things. Shimush Tihilim. When to say this chapter of Tihilim? Because they're not just chapters that are to be read, but also people say psalms. People, P-S-A-Y, people say psalms for an outcome. And about a thousand years ago, there was a great chacham, a great rabbi. His name was Chai Gaon. He was a Gaon also. He was a great, great learned teacher of the people. And he said, you read this chapter to be re released from prison. Some things never change. And here, verse 2 says, may God favor us and bless us. May he cause his countenance to shine among us. Meaning, if you're locked up in the slammer, <laughs> you want God to get you out of there, you say this chapter until the doors are opened by the warden. Where in the Sidur, recited before Ma'ariv, the evening service on Motza'e Shabbat in some congregations, or it's also said as one of the paragraphs of Kiddush Levana, the sanctification of the new moon service where people go outside of the synagogue and they look up in the sky and they see the crescent of the moon. And then they pray to have a good month. Ooh. Then finally, it's also said by some as one of the paragraphs following Sefirat HaOmer, the counting of the Omer, a ritual connecting Pesach and Shavuot. So everybody, you've been listening probably, let's see how long you've been listening, close to, I don't know, 20 minutes? And even 30 minutes, the producer of the Ruby University Haftorah Man show on Tehillim is telling me I ran 30 minutes. Well, is certainly interesting and exciting for me, and I'm not done. What I wanted to say is if, if you find that I'm able to teach you and, and make Tehillim comprehensible and understandable, that you can have a forcefulness when you're praying to God, that's your energy, or you can have a delicate, genteel way. But I think it's exciting to understand things deeper. And I hope, pray that you have a copy of the book. If you don't, just send me a hello. I'll be happy to send you a copy. And I am happy to tell you that people who see this book love this book. It's beautiful. And a lot of people want to give them as gifts to their friends and family. So please be in touch. Now I will honor the Kew Garden Synagogue's Ma'ariv service with singing this chapter. Stay with me. Lam not say ach bin nigot bin niginot miz moshir. I'm getting there. Elohim yechoneinu v'yevarcheinu. Oh, I'm missing it. Yo'er panov itanu sela. I'm getting it. Ladat ba'aretz dar kecha bechol goyim. Yeshua secha yaducha amim Elohim. Yaducha amim kulam. Yismechu v'iranenu leumim. I'm getting there. Ki tishbot amim mishor uleumim ba'aretz tanchem sela. Let's keep going. Yoducha amim Elohim, Yoducha amim Kulam, Eretz nasna yevula, Yevarecheinu Elohim, Eloheinu Yevarecheinu Elohim, Viru also kol afsei Eretz. Sorry, I had to sit through that. 
Anyway, I thank you all for listening, and I hope to be hearing from you. I'll be happy to answer any questions. And I've been teaching on Zoom. And if you have a simcha, if you have a happy occasion, or if there's a yard site, there's a haskara, I can be available through Zoom. I can teach. We can have the copy of the books in front of everybody. And I think it will add meaningfulness to the memory of a parent, a grandparent, a relative. And this is the beauty of Tehillim. It endures. I thank you all for listening. We'll see you again soon. Be well.